So with this episode, I'm going to talk about Sync Back Free. It is a free to use backup system. Now, there's other videos in here uh, on the channel that shows you how to use file history and, and shows you how to use the Windows 7 backup. Um, but for a lot of my business clients, um, I use Sync Back. Um, and there's two versions of it. There is the commercial version of it. Uh, and then there's the free version. So I'm going to show you sync back free. Um, and this is really because I've got one client who asked me to do this for them and then we lost contact with each other. I can't find her phone number. I haven't been able to reach her. So hopefully this video will help her. So you get sync back free um, from twobrightspark.com. And um, if you're not sure, you can go over to Google and just type in Sync Back Free, and it'll take you to Sync Back Free. It brings you here. So you just download the software. Like I said, now depending upon which browser is depending upon where it shows up. Google Chrome shows up here. Firefox shows up here. Uh, Microsoft Edge shows in the center. But once it's downloaded, um, you know, open when done, or run it, or you know, whatever you do, but you get it to install. There it goes. So you allow the program to install in basic default configurations, you know, uh, accept license agreement. Um, if you want to read it, by all means, you're going to put it in the default location. Let it install. Uh, launch it. If you want to join, if you want to read the help me file, you can or join the uh, mailing list. You can do that. Um, but you bring it open. And this is, when you first start off, this is what it looks like. Note, it talks about profiles, and that's what you do, is you create profiles. So, in this particular case, we're going to create a new one. It's going to be, give it a name. Well, we're going to call it Backup, because that's what it is, right? Backup. And it's going to ask you, what are you going to do? Now, backing up is when you're taking it from a device to a backup device. Synchronize is when you are syncing two devices to be the same. Mirror. Mirror works a little bit different. It's like synchronized, but it's in real time. Um, this is really, really important if you are a bigger company and you are have multiple servers, um, multiple redundant servers. Uh, so if the primary server goes down, the other one immediately pack, uh, kicks in. That's what mirroring is for. Um, I'm just going to show you basic backup, um, but feel free to tinker with these other ones. You can't screw up your computer as long as you do it right. <laughs> do a backup first, then try the other options, but we're going to do a backup. Um, we're going to go from an internal source, which is your hard drive, whether it be on your laptop or desktop. That's where we're going, and we're going to, you know, some type of um, external device, whether it be internal. If you have an internal hard drive, an external hard drive in this case I'm going to be using a USB flash drive um, if you have a USB external hard drive same thing um, file compression is you know if you want to compress the files that if you have limited space this one will run get that at today where now we're gonna make the changes to it so it's going to ask you source you do the little drop down arrow or you do the little folder over here if you're going to back up all of your personal files, the files you want to back up are in users. And in this case, it's studio on my computer, but it'll be whatever your name is here. Um, if note, if you are using QuickBooks, um, QuickEd, or any of those types of softwares, those programs generally save in the public folder. So you'll want to make a second one for the public folder but most of your personal files are all in the primary account. So we're gonna do studio. It's gonna ask for a destination. Again, hopefully you were paying attention when you plugged into your device where it goes to. In my case, it is drive E. The drive letter can change to whatever drive letter is assigned for it. Uh, so for my case, it's drive E for my flash drive. Your external hard drive might be E, could be G, could be F, whatever it is, that's what you want. So now it's going to do, it's going to copy all of my files in studio and put them on drive E. Then you get into a whole bunch of other options and I'm going to blow this up so you can see it. 
Um, we're not using a network drive. If he was using a network drive, obviously you can do that. Type of backup, we're just doing source to destination. Um, if we was doing a restore, you would want to do destination to source. Makes sense, right? Mirroring, mirroring, custom, so on and so forth. So forth. When you can actually schedule this to do certain things at a certain time. Most people I tell you, um, if you're conscientious about it, manually run it. Um, that way you know it's actually doing what it's supposed to be doing. Um, once you're confident about it doing what it's supposed to be doing, then you can trigger hot keys if you want to do that. Uh, your logins, if you have it set to run in the middle of the night, uh, and if your Windows requires a password, you got to put that in. Um, changes. Um, this is how it determines what changed and what happens. Uh, leave it at default. Uh, most of the time, if it recognizes that there's a, a date and time change, a file size change, um, something of that nature, it will, you know, automatically copy it. If you wanted to just do a specific information, you can. Um, insert, <laughs> this is if you're using a DVD burner. Uh, periodically, this is where it runs automatically in the background. You can set it for every 30 minutes um, or every day or once a week, again, automatically. But I tell people just, if you're first starting off using this program, do it manually until you figure it out. Time limit, um, you should never have to worry about this. In the days of old, when computers and processing time were expensive, you didn't allow it to run for a certain amount of time because then it would cost you more money. Um, programs. This is, and again, this is, most people will never use this. However, this is a feature that if you, um, like I have one dentist office who, in order for their backups to run, they have to terminate their um, SQL database um, because the backups won't work unless you do it. So this is where you would put in the command to kill a program um, or start a program. Um, you put the command in there to kill it, it kills it, then runs the backup, and then of course you could put in a program to start um, after it's done. So those are just some options. But like I said, for the most part, in the beginning, if you're first time using it, um, do it manually until you're confident it's doing what it's supposed to be, then you can go in and, and schedule things. Notifications. Um, this is probably the most annoying thing <laughs> on this software, uh, notifications, it'll run the backup and then it pops up on your screen. Um, you know, it'll also give you the options of, Hey, let me know when you started, when it finishes, da, 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 da. Um, again, if you're confident in what it's doing, um, great. If you're not, this will drive you, excuse me, this one will drive you insane because there are always going to be files that cannot be copied and that's because they're locked to the operating system for example um, and I would have to show you but you'll see ones that are called dot uh, log log um, net user dot log those are control files that the operating system use they cannot be copied they are not necessary to copy um, but when you're doing an all type of thing it'll attempt to do it and then you'll get this message that pops up and says your backup failed uh, no, your backup didn't fail. Look at the details uh, and I'll show you an example of that hopefully um, where it does that failure and then I can show you that. Um, search if you're looking for a specific file, so on and so forth. Export mode. Uh, yeah, export mode is really, really complex. You'll probably never use it, but you can um, change, you know, choose your sub, your sub directories and files you wish to do that, your log, you know, filters. Um, you know, these are all the different ones that it's not going to copy. It is not perfect. So you may have to add one like, uh, do, 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 star dot log. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, that way it doesn't copy the log files. These are all the, it, these are all the exemptions. It just will not copy any of these folders. Do, 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 do. do you wish to make the changes? Yes. Yes to all. So there's the log files I was telling you about. Dot dat's another one. Add that to the list. So those are all the files that it will not copy. If you wanted to not copy other files, you could do that. Um, or if you want to try to copy files, you could do that too. Uh, so these are, you know, like all the, the 
you know, comparing and file copies and so on and so forth, log files. This is where I said it's going to pop up after it's done running and show you, uh, and it will scare the bejesus out of you. Um, but most part, you just put in basic information, and then when it's done copying, uh, you test it to make sure it's all there. So we got this all done. We're going to apply and OK. Would you like to run a simulated? You, well, you can run a simulated if you want, uh, but we're going to say no for the simulation, and we're actually going to run unattended. Now, run unattended means it's not. It's going to check everything and automatically do it. It's not going to do anything else. Um, as you can see, that's quite a few files um, that are on here. Um, Thirteen thousand, and it's just that one folder. Uh, my entire user folder. Uh, which ironically controls like uh, your internet history, um, you know, all your personal files and folders, all your documents, all your downloads, so on and so forth. Yeah, it's it's quite amazing how big it is. You just don't realize how many files you have on a computer until you go to do this. Um, so yeah, this is <laughs> this is not a surprise. Um, it says it's going to take 29 minutes. So what we will probably do is I will pause the video and come back to it once it's done. Just for reference, I wanted to show you this. Your first time you're running a backup, it will always be the longest backup you run. Um, just that one folder alone, as you can see, we're at two hours and 53 minutes to go. Um, and it's still in the app data folder. So your first backup, don't be surprised if it takes a long, long time. Um, it does get shorter with um, the following one because then it's only doing file comparison. So I thought I'd let you know that because um, I'm going to cut out of the video again. Uh, hopefully I can catch it just before it gets to the very end here so you can see what it does. But if not, um, I'll pop back in and show you what it's supposed to do. Thanks. All right, so this is going to have to finish up and then I will uh, continue on with the video after the fact. I just had a phone call for an emergency service call, so I got to head out. Um, but this will finish up and then what will happen is a page will pop up that shows the uh, the details of the backup. Uh, and at that point, you know, you kind of look at it to make sure everything is going on. Right now, it's been running for 24 minutes, has three errors. I don't know what those errors are, but we'll find out when we look at it. Uh, it's probably files that uh, Windows can't access. So, and if you hear pitter patting of little feet upstairs, that's because the little one is awake upstairs in the apartments above us. So, anyways, when I get back from my service calls, I will finish up this video and get it posted. Talk to you later. All right, so I'm back from my emergency service call, and uh, it has finished. Fail is not uncommon, and I will show you why. So we're going to open it up. It opened up and you know, results failure. It copied 13,331 files. Where's the failure at? Well, there's 32. These are all the files that it could not copy. That's why it results as a failure. Um, and all of these are .dats, you know, text files. These are locked files that are related to the operating system. So this is not a surprise to see this. Um, so don't be alarmed if you use um, sync back and you get a failure. Uh, don't be alarmed to see that. So, but on the flip side now, when you do it for the second time, it should go a lot faster. We're going to see because it should not have to copy all the files. It should just have to compare. And once it compares it, then it makes the changes accordingly and goes from there. So yeah, it's still saying 41 minutes. That's because it needs to do what it's going to do, but we're going to let it run. And if it looks like it's going to be an extended period of time, I will pause the video and go from there. And just while this is doing this, just to show you, let's go look at the drive, and there they are. So it did copy them. Um, the The biggest problem is the app data folder. Um, that's where a lot of those um, files are that are not um, possible to be copied. And that's where you just go in and you modify it later on, saying, okay, this folder you don't take. And uh, it will save a lot of time. Now, when we're doing data recovery for a client, we can usually capture that folder. 
uh, at least most everything that's in there um, is simply because a lot of the times your passwords are stored in those folders and if we do it right we can save your passwords but not always if ooh, excuse me it's like five out of ten fifty percent of the times we'll copy that folder put it back into your computer if we're doing a data recovery for like a wipe and reinstall or a hard drive replacement um, and sometimes it will take and I can go right into your Gmail or right into your website and your passwords are all there sometimes it doesn't the one I just did yesterday where I put a new uh, I had to do a wipe and reinstall um, I copied the app data folder uh, put it back into the client's computer and it didn't take uh, in fact that was who I had to go out to do the emergency service call for was um, him because he just couldn't get it to um, connect to his Wi-Fi and he couldn't get his Gmail to work so I had to reset his Gmail password but yeah um, so normally this goes relatively quickly like I said on the second time um, obviously 22 minutes is a lot less time than it was before I'm not sure what the speed was on the last one but yeah as you can see the second time and each sequential time after that it goes a lot faster we're down to 13 minutes and it's only been like two minutes and 40 seconds so that kind of tells you how fast it's going to go and it's going to give me another failure because it's trying to copy those app file or app data files um, again some of the files that are in there because they're locked to the operating system they can't be copied and so it always triggers a fail um, always look just to make sure but if it, it looks like if it's dat files if it's log files um, if you're reading the error message it'll say it's a locked file um, yeah it, it, that's not a surprise to see so looks like we're most of the way through the app data file on the second run we're just waiting for it to finish up so the other thing it will do too you can with this type of a setting that if you deleted a file off of your computer in the backup brand it does not delete it out of the backup um, make that clear um, so your backups can be much larger than what's on your computer um, and I do that for, and I when I set that up for clients I do that for a particular reason one um, because people accidentally delete files no I didn't want to delete that how do I get it back well then I can go back into their uh, recovery files or their backup files and I can restore that file um, there you go look how quick almost done already um, so yeah it's not uncommon to see if you delete a file on your computer that it's still on your backup that's perfectly fine uh, in fact I tell people I prefer that and there you go another failure 22 this time and again those are all going to be like again diagnostics um, you know access was denied can't file the uh, access this because it's a symptom file there's the dot dats um, so yeah don't be an alarm uh, when you see the fail uh, look at it just to make sure but don't be alarmed when you see it so that's how you use this program and I'm going to close it out and if you found this useful like share and subscribe to the channel you know if you can't do that because you don't have a Google account there's Facebook you can always find us over there if you got computer problems or if you need help with this particular program give me a call I'll be glad to help you set it up so talk to you all later